Okay, so greetings everyone. Um, here I am again. We're going to talk about and continue with our course in psychological statistics. And now we're going to talk about statistics in the research process, particularly how to use statistics and the technicalities of stats um, in the research process. So um, we're going to see the research process from the standpoint of statistics. And we're going to look into particularly, in particularly, um, three steps. But first, let's, um, let's try to define research. Research is a procedure for carefully finding accurate solutions to important and relevant questions by the use of scientific method of gathering, interpreting um, in information. Um, in simple terms, and as the way I like it to define, research is practically just a procedure or a process of answering problems in our society nowadays. Of course, our problems become more and more complex, hence the process of answering it therefore also becomes complex and we want to be uh, careful in answering them um, because one slight uh, mistake would lead to another, may lead to another maybe bigger problem. Okay, so we like to define research as this. It's a procedure uh, basically of finding accurate solutions to problems. So. Um, when we talk, when we inject statistics in research, we are actually particularly looking at um, three steps. So first, we want to formulate the problem, then we want to define the population of the study, and third, uh, we need to identify the variables of that study. Okay. Um, so of course, we're gonna we're gonna talk first about number one. So we're going to formulate the problem. Um, in formulating the problem, it's quite important that we should adhere to these five principles in formulating prob the problem. In, in social science research, the statement of the problem is where you can see the specific problem. So we call that part statement of the problem. So when formulating the problem or the statement of the problem, the specific objectives, one may take a look at and adhere this acronym. So it should be, um, it should be SMART. S stands for specific. M stands for measurable, A should be attainable, um, R is realistic, and um, T is time bound. So when you say S for specific, um, when you answer problems, it should be, or when you formulate, you know, you want to answer some problems in psychology, it should be specific. It should not be one broad problem where it, you know, say you want to answer a lot of things. Um, try to find um, specific problems which you can answer and you know, be specific. M is measurable, um, the problem which you want to answer, of course, should be measurable, um, unless otherwise um, we cannot measure it in such a way that we cannot deal with numbers, hence we cannot use statistics. Um, A is attainable, um, shall we say, in practical reasons, you must perform and finish your thesis in two semesters, so make sure it's attainable given, of course, it's re somehow related to time boundedness. Um, if you're given two semesters, make sure you can finish it within two semesters. Or if you give yourself like two years to finish it or say uh, a year to finish it, make sure that it fits within that year. And R is realistic. Um, enough said about that. Okay, so that's number one. That's how we practically um, formulate the problem. Number two would be we should define the population of the study. Okay, so we should define the population of the study. So when you say population, um, when, when you take a look at demographics, population is the number of people within a certain area. But in uh, statistics, we define population. In um, all of the stat books that I have read, it's um, denoted by big N, or shall we say capital N. Um, it denotes all subjects under investigation, not necessarily human beings um, in, in its entirety. But of course, when we're dealing with psychology, psychological statistics, it, it should be human beings, right? Um, so population, when you take all of the data from the population, you're going to take all. We call it a census. Okay? And when you take a census, you can gather data from that census. Right? So when you gather data from the census, what you gather is actually can be thought of as a, param a parameter. A parameter is a number that describes a characteristic of a population. 
Okay, so that's what we call a parameter. Any data or any characteristic of the data that you took from the population via census is what you call a parameter. Okay? Next is a sample. A sample, which is denoted by small n, okay, but, but by all of the books that I've read, um, a sample is a subset of the population. So it's a small part of the population, but eventually you will see as we go along descriptive stat and we reach inferential stat that this sample, even though it's a small portion of that population, plays a big role in inferential statistics. So hence, we need to, to formulate this. We need to understand this thoroughly. So when we gather data from the sample, we call that process a survey. All right, and when we survey, we need to know how how to sample, or we should at least um, understand different sampling techniques. Um, when you say sampling, it's a procedure of determining the sample. Again, a sample is a subset of this population, which will in the end represent the population in inferential stat. So we should be able to determine who to sample, we call that process sampling, and when we gather data, we call that a survey. So hopefully it makes sense with all the words here. And uh, when we gather data, after we survey, we gather some data and say we make sense out of that data, that we create a number that will represent uh, something based on that data, we call that a statistic without an, without an S. Okay? So some are quite... Um, Confusing a bit, but we must make sure that this word is different from the subject matter or different from the field statistics. Okay, so these are some definitions that one must um, must understand. Let's proceed down to number three. Now, you are you already formulated your pro your problem. Number two, you already know your population. Thirdly, you need to identify the variables of the study. So what do we mean by variables? Variable or a variable is a measurable characteristic of the study. So you should understand um, or know, well, you know the problem. Secondly, you know the population. What will you take from that population? What information will you take from that information? We call that variable, okay? And data or data are values that are variable that variables can assume. So say you, will, you are in particular, you want the uh, let's make it um, basic for now. A height of persons. You want to determine height of person and try to see if there is a common height among um, freshman students. Um, your variable is the height. Your data are the actual heights you got from your respondents or from your sample. Okay? You collect all that data. What you have is a data set. It's a collection of data values. Okay? So... Your variable is the height, the data set or the data is the individual heights, and the data set is, of course, the, the group of heights that you have. Okay, so take note of this um, terminologies over here. Okay, so let's cite an example. Say we have a problem which states that, which asks the question, what is the average weekly allowance of a USLS Psych 101 student for the first semester of AY 2022-2023. So that's your problem. Firstly, we need to identify your population. So what is your population here? What are who or what are the respondents or the participants? Uh, from whom will you take data or the variable from? So our population here would be our, well, this, this one here. That's actually you. Um, USLS Psych 101 students. And when we determine the population, we should be very specific um, because um, the ter determining the population and if you have uh, misunder misunderstood the population, um, it would have some bearing in your study. So we should make sure that it is all Psych 101 students for the first semester of AY 2021-2022. Now, question is, what thing or what variable do we need to get from this population of ours in order for us to determine or answer the problem? Okay, so the problem is asking what is the average weekly allowance of all USLS Psych 101 students for the first semester 
of a weight 2021-2022-2023. So therefore, the, the variable here is what we want to take from them, the information we want to take from them. So the data or the information we want to take from them are their weekly allowance. So that is our variable here. Okay? Problem, step one. Step two, determine your population. Step three, what information do you need to get from those population of viewers in order for you to answer the problem above? Okay? And of course, after this variable, after you got the variable, that is where we actually inject statistics and we will be doing statistics here. We will then end up with an anticipated conclusion. Okay? So that would be the average weekly allowance of a Psych 101 student for the first semester of AY 2021-2022, or rather, sorry, 2022-2023, that's, that's a typo, is blank. Okay? So, let's review the process. First, state the problem. Determine your population. Who will you take data from in order for you to answer the problem? And determine the thing or the information or the data that you need. We call that a variable. The variable that you need to get from your population in order for you to answer the problem. After getting the variables, identifying the variables, you apply statistics and you answer the problem, therefore you will end up with a conclusion. All right, so I hope that makes it clear. If it's not, rewind to this video, rewind that part. Okay, now I'll give you, I'll cite another example. Um, this example is, well, it's close to me. It's based on my study. Um, way back 2019 from my thesis, master's thesis. Um, problem is quite simple, um, so that we can, we will be on the same page. Um, I'm going to have it problem, population, variable type. So problem, what is the level of attitude towards mathematics of grade 11 students? So this is my, this is one of my specific problems um, in my thesis. It's quite um, straight to the point. Now, try to answer, what is the population of the study? Okay, so the population of the study, who will I take the data from? From grade 11 students, so that's my population. Okay, I have identified my, I have identified my population, hence, what do I need to determine or to get from my population in order for me to get the answer to the problem? So what is or are my variables? Okay, so my problem technically and asks the level of attitude towards mathematics. So that would be my variable. I want to determine the level of attitude, sorry, towards math. Um, it's quite, it's missing towards math. It should be attitude towards math. Okay, and I, then I have an anticipated conclusion, which is that the level of attitude towards mathematics of grade 11 students is, okay, after determining or identifying the variables, I apply statistics, and therefore, I can conclude from here. Okay? So, I will end this video with exercises. So, we will be answering this in class. Alright? So, question is, identify the population and the variables of the study. The problems will be given here. So, let me just read number one. What is the mean number of calories do... What is the mean number of calories do Filipino men and women consume per day in, a month, in the month of June 2021? Number two, what are the most important factors that influence the career choice of USLS graduate students in AY 2021-2022? And number three, what proportion of male and female USLS students is the um, of the first semester AY 21-2022 use the top five social networks? So what proportion? Okay, of uh, USLS students use the top five social um, networks. Okay, so we'll be answering this in class, and that will be the end of, of my slide. But before we end there, let's take a look ahead in research. So we've talked about census and samples, but there are some technicalities before we can reach our anticipated conclusion or our conclusion at the end. So we need to be aware of this. Okay, so, sorry, it's not an exercise. Generating the conclusion is not a problem if a census is conducted. Okay, so when you want to generate a conclusion and you had made a census, 
it will not be a problem because if you conducted the census, all the data will be gathered by you. So when you gather all the data, you don't you don't need to to apply interpretation because the the you don't need to apply in short inferential statistics. You don't need to infer because the conclusions are straightforward. The data are given to you already. You you cannot apply inferential stat here. Whereas if only a sample was taken from the population of the study, the conclusion should never be about the sample. It should be about the population. That's the one that I have um, emphasized as always. When we infer or when we conclude, we always conclude to the population of the study. That's why it's important to identify it. Even if we, take, we took a sample, um, say we only took a portion of the population, say out of 1,000, we only took 300. And from that 300, when we conclude, our conclusion should not be closed within the 300 individuals, but it should be reflected to the, back to the population. So that's how, a proper, that's how a proper conclusion works. You cannot conclude only to the isolated group of your sample, but you should always share the conclusion or reflect the conclusion back to the population at hand. Okay, so hence its form will be quite different from the ante anticipated conclusion as in the previous examples. Okay, so sorry, this is not an exercise. Um, this is where my slide will end. Okay, so this is statistics in the research process, and um, looking forward to to have you again in my future videos. So thank you very much.